Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I shall be speaking on brachial plexus. Now, what's happened is, in the last uh, 10 years, we've been working on single on a variety of uh, applications, cardiac, functional, um, there's a, uh, that is perfusion, and so many other things. But then, uh, over the last uh, 10 years, in these three hospitals, we had a very aggressive plastic surgery team. Um, they were after me to get as much brachial plexus information as possible, and I thought it's the best forum to uh, showcase whatever material which we had encountered during the last uh, 10 years. Um, the important thing is uh, in MR there are so much of uh, activity going on in various directions, uh, in various parts of the human body. And uh, what this presentation highlights is one has to pay attention to post-processing. The more knobology familiarity is there, uh, meaningful images can be derived. So uh, let me begin with just two slides on anatomy, not more, because this area is a little bit complex. Uh, a plexus, as defined, is a network of intersecting nerves. Among the plexus, plexi in the human body, brachial plexus is the most complex. It's got three trunks, six divisions, three cords, as most of you are familiar with. And when we look at the layout, the, there are various mnemonics to remember the parts of the brachial plexus. The one mnemonic which I, you, I remember from the anatomy days is uh, uh, Rajasthan Tourism Development Corporation Bikaner. So this has stuck with me for quite a long time. And uh, explanatory wise, uh, roots, there are basically C5 to T1. When C4 is present, it's termed as uh, participating in the brachial plexus. The term prefix is used. And when T2 participates, the term postfix is used. This is very important because the surgeon would uh, want to know, uh, are we dealing with a prefix or postfix? Is there any variation? The roots, which are very close to the, spine, the neural foramen, come out and form three trunks, the upper and the lower and the middle. The middle, just one important point, it's solely made of C7 root. Each of these trunks has two divisions, anterior and posterior. It's also a functional division. The anterior division supplies the flexors of the limb, whereas posterior supplies the extensors of the limb. And then finally there are cords, and then there are branches. Bulk of the MR of the brachial plexus focuses on the upper part, that is roots, trunks, divisions. Cords and branches is something which is not paid much attention to by radiologists uh, simply because it's that much difficult to map the division, cords and branches and it's much easier to map the first three power components of the brachial plexus. Now I'll move on to a few cases which illustrate uh, the various aspects of brachial plexus imaging. An adult male with weakness upper limb following trauma. So the initial question comes up is how is a comprehensive scan done as one sees the first few images and what sequences are to be used. So a comprehensive image is one which starts with the analysis of spinal cord because the nerve roots of C5 to T1 is attached from the cord and any avulsion or any rupture or any in traction injury pulls it from the spinal cord. So hemosiderin staining, lesions in the cord at the side, very close to the attachment of the roots are very important points to be analyzed and conveyed to the surgeon. Similarly, Presence of pseudomeningocele, which we shall come to a little bit later, is also another important point. And then, to complete the investigation of brachial plexus, analysis of the muscles uh, is uh, very important because there's an entity called Parsonage Turner syndrome, which is basically a denervation, hypertrophy, and atrophy. Early stages edema, late stages long standing brachial plexus injury would have atrophy of the muscles. And here, there are few images which would overlap with the shoulder presentation done very uh, wonderfully by the previous speaker. Those analysis also has to be factored in in a given case to complete the entire set of sequences. So the challenge, there are few challenges. We need to know where, which part of the brachial plexus is located. The roots are in the interscalene triangle between the two scalene muscles. The trunks on the other hand are in the posterior cervical triangle 
with the lower trunks in close contact with apex of the lung and therefore the lung lesions in particular involve the trunks which we'll show in some few examples the divisions if some any at any given time when you're analyzing images the divisions is equal to clavicle is equal to just below the clavicle this is uh, just a simple thumb rule to analyze the divisions the cords closely wrap the subclavian artery so subclavian lesions by and large involve division and cords in particular cords and branches are of course at the axilla as shown in these coronal diagrams of MR the next information is on sequences there are variety of sequences but among most of among them for a quick glance and the most meaningful one which the clinicians would understand is a coronal stir to image which gives the entire as much of amount of information on the entire length of the brachial plexus which is usually around 15 centimeters to 17 centimeters the rest are all focusing on either on the roots or on the enhancement pattern or on sometimes MRA and MRV is ut utilized to pick up uh, information specific to that particular etiology let us analyze a little bit on Parsner's Turner syndrome by using this case how do we evaluate the MR images for a Parsonage Turner syndrome what are the usual findings what are the unusual findings this syndrome was first described in 1948 in a series of patients characterized clinically by an abrupt onset of shoulder pain with variable weakness confused clinically with a variety of shoulder entities the involved muscles are innovated by the C5 to C8 roots and how does it look on the image the sagittal oblique image is what it was uh, described in this particular article but one can use axial and uh, oblique coronals to analyze more clearly in the early stages of learning the suprasacral there are three nerves essentially to be evaluated and a group of the entire uh, tendons and a group of the muscles in and around the shoulder the three nerves are suprascapular axillary and subscapular the suprascapular is from the upper trunk axillary is from the posterior cord subscapular is from the posterior cord when there is involvement of the supraspinatus and infraspinatus alone it's suprascapular nerve when there is addition of teres minor there is also the axillary nerve which is which is involved in the brachial plexus injury a pure axillary nerve would imply the teres major and deltoid as shown in this diagram where there is a little sparing of the supra and the infraspinatus which are relatively high, no, that is iso intense to the rest of the muscles the involvement of all the three muscles all the three nerves would involve the entire muscles in the sagittal oblique view when we look at a given case like in this particular case on the right hand side we are not able to clearly see the delineate the nerves there is evidence of pseudomeningocele the supraspinatus infraspinatus teres minor all are involved and that would offer a clue about which are the type of nerves in the brachial plexus which one has to specifically delineate and analyze and evidently it's from the three nerves subscapular suprascapular axillary nerve so parsonage turner syndrome offers a lot of information which has to be uh, analyzed in relation to the brachial plexus injury occasionally you get cases like this where besides all the injuries there would be the muscles which are here this is the rhomboideus and when we look at the anatomical supply of the rhomboideus minor and major they are supplied by the dorsal scapular nerve which is one of the first uh, branches from the C5 root what this means is if, if the uh, rhomboidus minor, minor and major are involved then the lesions are very close towards uh, that is towards the neural foramen and, and involving the upper trunks so these are some indirect clues and which will have to be uh, correlated with careful and meticulous analysis of the uh, axial slices at the region of C5 where the coronal images of the entire slab MIPS